Finally, I decided that I didn't know enough about the candidates. I kept hearing all these names in the news. Kamala Harris, Amy Klobuchar, who are these people? Like, I've seen brief snippets of them, but uh, you consider what a daunting task it is to run for president and how much ego and how much confidence that truly takes. It made me think that I really needed to go through and watch these. And so I decided um, against my conscience, against my better judgment, I was going to watch some CNN because the CNN town halls have been pretty much uh, these 30 to 30 minute to one hour introductions to each of these candidates where they've talked about different things and uh, it's been more focused on them rather than on the moderators. But in true MSM, CNN fashion, of course it's very um, meticulously planned, uh, well thought out questions that it's, it's mostly softball stuff. And there were only a few really shocking moments, but for the most part, before I get into talking about the individual candidates, and I've made a list of, what, of three, seven of them so far, I just wanted to say that it's, uh, you know, I watch this political stuff, but you listen to any politician talk, and as Miles McGinnis, McGinnis cleverly put it, it's sort of like listening to a waitress describe the items on the menu, where at, to a point you're just... I mean, a lot of it is just hot air. I mean, I remember when I went to see Barack Obama in 2008, and at this instance, I got a chance to shake his hand, which was pretty cool, and I noticed that he was much smaller than he looks on camera. But I remember him saying, uh, we got to take money off Wall Street and put it on Main Street. And it's comments like that. It's just these basic uh, pedestrian, juvenile, just whatever. It's just like it's... It's a brand of speech. It's an idiolect in the same way that teachers talk to their students or mothers talk to their children. I mean, it's a form of talking. And it's filled with anecdotes. This is something that goes back to James Carville, Bill Clinton. And Bill Clinton got away with that. And so I think that sort of changed how we approach um, talking to town halls and everything, where you do everything has to have a personal story. It has to have an anecdote or something. And there's a lot of emotion and a lot of talking points. And to some degree, each of these candidates have their own affectations, and we'll get into them now. Okay, so number one... Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. Uh, she was the first video, and I was interested in watching it. But honestly, as I just said, going over just the idiolect and how politicians speak and just not being ready for that... I found it just really not memorable. Like I went back and I thought, well, what do I remember about her? Okay, she's black. She's from San Francisco, Nancy Pelosi. Like that's working out well, isn't it? Anyone who's been to San Francisco in the last 25 years knows that it is a shithole. And so I don't know, I don't want anyone who's done such a terrible job out there where they are paying people six figure salaries to to spray shit off the streets and they have a huge uh, opioid epidemic. You see people shooting up heroin. They've done a video of this. Like, just, just look up San Francisco sometimes and you'll find a lot of ugly stuff. And I remember going to Haight-Ashbury and thinking, oh, this is gonna be like, everyone's happy and hippie and all that. But no, it's just scary people with Rottweilers on chains. I wish I had more to say about Kamala Harris, but apart from being black and from San Francisco, um, the black part doesn't bother me, of course, but the San Francisco part certainly does. Uh, apart from that, uh, she wasn't memorable, and I can't even really remember what she had to say. So that's Kamala Harris. Don't waste your vote on her. Number two, Amy Klobuchar. Klobuchar from Minnesota. She's got that great Minnesota accent and uh, she reminds me of the Karen meme. Can I speak to the manager, please? Right? Very vanilla, very Melvin, uh, very type A. And I, again, with Klobuchar, I couldn't hear any dramatic policies that she had to talk about. She didn't go into uh, universal basic income that's not on her radar at all. Very uh, tepid basic Medicare patch up sort of things like same thing Obama did like oh we should kind of fix it but let's let's fix it with compromise and a series of compromises and all this 
not as radical as many of the other candidates, but uh, certainly looks like a leader, certainly looks like a boss, certainly looks like someone who could take control and might even have uh, some strength against Trump. The other advantage to Klobuchar is I can't see really any uh, skeletons in her closet. Anyway, next we have Bernie Sanders. Enough has already been said about him, and in fact, I did vote for him. And he was my last uh, left-wing vote. Perhaps the last vote I will ever cast was for old, old Burn, back when I was feeling the burn. He, uh, he got burned for not running as an independent, but deciding to go again as a Democrat. And uh, he was also burned on Trump's no-socialism comment. He kind of flubbed that one. And then when someone asked him if uh, prisoners should be allowed to vote, like the Boston Marathon bomber, he said, oh, everyone should be allowed to vote, which is a dramatically unpopular opinion and puts him uh, even further to the left than he needs to be. So actually, I did have a dream about Bernie Sanders last February, and I had a dream that I met him. One of the only uh, presidential dreams that I've had, but I've had a few others, but I remember meeting him and saying to him directly, look, man, you don't have a chance. And I stand by that. Bernie really flubbed the town hall meeting, and so uh, I'm surprised when I hear liberals like that. They had a re I had friends who originally said, oh, he's got all these great ideas. Great ideas, man. He's talking about letting prisoners vote, prisoners who are not allowed to do other things, basic things like leave the house. He's decided, oh, well, we, they should still be allowed to vote. Never going to happen. Sorry, Bernie. Uh, you had your chance in 2016, and the people that you're pandering to now ruined that. Which brings us to... John Delaney. Which was by far the funniest of all of the town hall meetings that I watched. Uh, he looked the least prepared. He looked the phoniest. He just looked the absolute worst. Just his mannerisms, you know. I wonder if he ever sees himself on camera, because I see myself on camera when I upload these, and I think, yeah, those not presidential material here. I don't think I would, I don't think I would run for president, and I have enough self-awareness to do that. But uh, at least I'm not trying to. At least it's not an act that I'm putting on. But you'd see Delaney, and he was just like really moving his arms. And as I said before, where we had so many candidates give just um, personal stories, his answers were always the same, like. Uh, well, that's a very good question. Thank you for answering that question. I just met someone who asked me that question. You know what? Someone just asked me that question. Well, yeah, dude, because you're running for president. Of course, people would ask you questions about policy. But what really made him stand out to me and, and what I thought was the funniest moment was at the, at, towards the end, a student asked him about student loans and the inflation of, of student loans and, and what he will do about taking care of student debt. And Delaney goes into one of his anecdotes without answering the question. He just says, yeah, well, did you know I just found out this law that uh, um, student loans are the only loans that you can't file for bankruptcy for? And then he just kind of left it at that <laughs> without giving much of an answer. He just said, yeah, it's a really bad system. I, I totally feel that without offering a solution. And, and so uh, the moderator smartly says, um, so are you saying that... Um, Finally, for bankruptcy is a good option. And he says, oh, no, no, we got to work on other things or whatever. He kind of uh, tries to get away from that question in his, in his manner. But uh, I thought it was really funny. And uh, he doesn't have a snowball's chance in hell. Bernie Sanders is more of a chance. Anyway, that's John Delaney. I forgot about him already, and you will too. Next, we have Tulsi Gabbard. And uh, I guess I, she was one of the first to announce, and she had been on the Joe Rogan podcast. So my younger brother told me about her, but I didn't really know anything about her, so I decided to watch the town hall. And like the others that I'm talking about, it was mostly just softball questions. It was just climate change, gay rights, uh, drugs, marijuana. And, I mean, they all seem to fall in the same party lines. Tulsi Gabbard is no different. She did have a troubling LGBT stance, and she gave the Nuremberg defense uh, during the town hall. She said, well, I don't, really, I don't really remember. I didn't know what my father was supporting. I didn't know enough about it to realize that I was supporting something wrong. Yeah, 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 okay. The rest of it was just empty political talk. 
Another thing, I found out she's Hindu. I didn't realize that, but I think it would be interesting to have a Hindu president. But a Hindu is not something I associate with Hawaii, or as she calls it, Hawaii. You know, as people, the locals have their own way. They don't put the natural Y in there as we would a normally speaking English, which demands for a consonant to be put in there. But that's linguistics. I won't get into all that. And she kept saying aloha, and she had a lay, and she said, oh, I, I didn't have one from Hawaii, but I put this in the fridge last night. And so that stuff was cute, but again, uh, I don't know, Tulsi, you don't really stand out. There wasn't anything that was uh, really showing what she believed in. She wasn't really proposing any policies. Two more. Okay, we've got Pete Buttigieg or Pete Buttigieg. I know your husband, blah, blah, blah. They made small talk, of course, highlighting the fact that he's gay, which would be interesting, the first gay president um, from the same state as Mike Pence, no less. And he kept talking about Mike Pence. I don't think that's really a deal breaker for Americans anymore. Like we have, um, uh, I mean, gay culture is just part of, it's so mainstream now. They're pushing it in a way. I mean, there is this talk of having drag queens uh, talk at libraries and so on, but just general LGBT culture. I mean, that's just something that you, even when I was in high school, everyone just sort of knew that what was going on, it was okay. Um, and so, of course, there, that isn't much against him. And for all we know, we've had a gay president before, Obama. Um, and this guy is 37, okay? And someone asked him, oh, you're just a couple years older than me. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, same here. Uh, this great uh, person in the audience asked him, you know, I, I don't think I have my life figured out enough to be president. Like, uh, I don't think in two years I'll be at that point. Like, what makes you think that you can? And he understood that and he took, he, uh, you can tell he's answered that question before, but uh, part of his boldness is courage getting up on stage and talking about it. I mean, who knows? Maybe. Some of these candidates are quite young, and I think uh, 37 isn't too young. Especially given um, Buttigieg, I really thought he was quite charismatic. I liked the way he talked. He seemed natural. He didn't seem like he was forcing it. It seemed like this is just who he was. He brought up universal basic income, which I thought was really cool, which I've only heard Andrew Yang talk about, but Yang hasn't been on the panel yet. Great talker. Um, Again, a lot of it is just the same party line crap. And of course, the CNN town hall, they're not going to go into anything. That's shocking. There are only a few standout moments in any of these talks that I've mentioned so far. But he kind of reminds me of Dukakis, a very likable Dukakis. But I don't think he would flub the uh, rape your wife question, or I guess in this case, rape your husband question, in the same way that Dukakis did. And I don't picture Buttigieg wearing any funny helmets. But at the same time, I don't think he has much of a chance. Our last candidate, Elizabeth Warren. And uh, I just finished watching hers, and she did it in Mississippi, and she really had these affectations. It looked like affectations. It looked like it was Hillary Clinton talking. Hillary Clinton, if she had a little more health and a little more energy, a little more vitality. But... Um, of course, someone asked her about the uh, one one thousand twenty fourth percent uh, Indian. She said she made this really horrible statement. She said, "Oh, I can guarantee that claiming to be Native American has not helped me or my family at all," which is complete bullshit, and we all know it. I must confess. I've, well, I've already confessed this on camera before, but uh, I got into my undergrad studies, I put Native American, because I thought I was. We all thought we were, until my brother took a test uh, a couple years ago. And as far as I know, I mean, I don't know directly if it helped me get into school in spite of dropping out and not having excellent grades. I don't know if it directly helped, but it couldn't have hurt. And so I would never say, oh yeah, well, I claimed that at one point, but it never benefited me. Yeah, it did. It benefited me, just like it benefited her. Like, she got into uh, law school over it. So, anyway, I've said enough about all this. I'll talk more about future candidates and their positions in future videos. That's all I've got for now. Thanks for listening. Over and out.